You're living your dream, huh? You just eat and sleep all day. Hey everybody, I'm David, and my buddy Joseph recently asked me a very interesting question on Twitter. He asked, has your presence on YouTube made you enjoy this type of work, or even if you weren't on YouTube, would you still do what you do? I actually really had to think about this question, and it's actually in two parts. The first part, has your presence on YouTube made you enjoy this type of work? I was kind of doing it before I started making videos, because after I graduated from high school, I started working with my dad doing audiovisual work. So it was lots of computers, lots of video stuff, and I really enjoyed doing that. That was one of the reasons I wanted to start doing YouTube videos to begin with. But the second part of the question is, even if you weren't on YouTube, would you still do what you do? And that's the one I'm not so sure about, because as much as I love the Ocarina now, it was kind of just a hobby before I started making videos with it. However, I would still probably be making music, because that's always been a huge dream of mine. I've always had a huge passion for music since I was a toddler. My dad has video of me singing in my diapers. He bought me a pair of drumsticks when I was very little and I beat everything in right in front of me to make as many rhythms and drum beats as I could. Uh, my parents got me a little keyboard because I picked out things by ear and it was just it was always a uh, huge love and passion for making and listening to music. So from a young age I knew I wanted to make music for a living and that kind of coupled up with another huge passion of mine which was video games. My dad loved video games so he often invited us to play those along with them and I discovered the music in video games and fell in love with that because that music went along with those adventures that I remember having as a kid and I just thought what better way to make a living than to make that music for these 16-bit adventures. So fast forward a couple years to when Nintendo 64 came out and The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released and this was a video game about a musical instrument. This was like mind-blowing especially when I found out that the Ocarina existed in real life. So I got an ocarina, I loved it, had it for two weeks before I broke it, and then immediately I felt like, okay, maybe this wasn't for me. Even though a couple months later I ended up replacing that ocarina, I just didn't have a driver passion to keep playing it. So I put it aside and started focusing on other things like Boy Scouts getting my Eagle Scout award and graduating from high school, starting to work and going to college, all that stuff. So the ocarina wasn't in my life, but music still was. After I graduated and started working, I started getting more heavily involved with music. I picked up the guitar, I started singing, I made the decision to major in music, and it was all because I knew music was still going to be a huge part of my life. And it wasn't until my second year of college where I discovered a 12 hole ocarina on eBay and I'd never seen anything like it. It immediately brought back the nostalgia from The Legend of Zelda and I had to have it. So I won that on an eBay auction and then I started getting encouraging comments from people who were hearing me play it at college. I took my ocarina to college and I played it with my buddy who had a guitar and um, one of the school administrators actually invited us to play uh, their, their Christmas party, which was really random, but pretty cool. That was my first Ocarina performance. So from there I discovered YouTube, which was about midway through 2006, and I decided to post an Ocarina video at the end of the year, and that just kind of exploded with really positive comments, and I totally wasn't expecting that, but I felt like that point was a huge turning point for me, because all of a sudden I felt like, wow, I'm getting these encouraging comments, this is looking like people are enjoying this, so I should probably just keep doing it, I guess. So I started posting more often. I just became more and more passionate about the ocarina and just sharing what the musical instrument could do and its capabilities and just how awesome of an instrument it was. Even though up to that point, it was just a hobby. I had no intention of that becoming a huge part of what I did for a living. So looking back, my dream was to make music for a living. And that's what I'm essentially doing now. Not exactly the capacity I thought it was gonna be, but I think it's really cool that those options are still open in the future. So my takeaway for all this are probably a couple things about whether or not you should follow your dreams. And I think the first takeaway is to ask yourself what it is that you really enjoy doing. What is your passion? And I kind of say that with a little bit of caution because you can have a lot of passion about a particular thing, but passion is fleeting. It's not always going to be there. What's you, what you need to have behind the passion is a drive and a very strong work ethic. Because once the passion goes away, which sometimes it does in what I do for a living, sometimes I just don't feel like doing certain things. Like I don't feel like editing a video or I don't feel like coming up with a new musical concept. I just kind of burnt out and I want to just relax. But then the work ethic kicks in and I tell myself, you just got to do it. Like you just have to get it done or else you're going to fall off your schedule or you're not going to accomplish the thing that has to come after you do this one thing and if you don't have that drive it's just gonna become a huge train wreck and you don't want to experience that. Second and this one is really hard you have to be ready for failure because 
sometimes you're just gonna mess up. Sometimes things aren't gonna go as you planned, but uh, you gotta be ready to accept it, get up, and move on to the next thing. I used to have this poster up on my wall when I was a kid, and it said, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. I really like that quote because it shows that you can shoot for this huge uh, goal and accomplishment, but just in case you miss it and you aren't able to accomplish that thing, you're open to experiencing and accepting other opportunities that might come from that. You're gonna land among the stars, but there's lots of other things that you can do and you have the skills necessary to attack those things because you tried so hard to reach the moon. Third, it really has to have at least one person or multiple people around you who are going to encourage you, who are gonna give you feedback and help you uh, stay on the right path. Because if it wasn't for the people who are leaving positive comments on my early YouTube videos, I would not be doing this for a living, which again, this is a dream job. I get to play an instrument from my childhood, making music for a living, making YouTube videos and connecting with new people and building these relationships every single day. Uh, and if it wasn't for those people early on who pushed me and encouraged me to keep doing what I loved, none of this would be happening right now. So that could be a parent, a sibling, a teacher, a coach, just some someone in your life who's going to help you move along on that path that you're trying to pave. So find somebody who can encourage you and uh, keep you motivated on that path. And fourth, if you don't have a dream job or a dream in mind yet, that's okay. You can figure that out as you go along. Think about it, talk to friends, pray about it. Uh, do more things in school, more try out more activities, more sports, just, you'll find something that you enjoy doing that you feel like you were meant to do on this earth. And the more people that you have involved in your life too, the more that you can go up to and ask, what is it that I'm good at? What do you see that I have the most fun doing? And those people will help direct and guide you as well. So to recap and briefly answer that question from the beginning, yes, I would probably still be making music on some level if YouTube wasn't around or if I wasn't involved with YouTube, but that's always been a huge dream of mine since I was a kid. And it's been a huge blessing to be living that out today. So I'd love to hear from you guys on this topic. What are your dream jobs? How are you going about to accomplish those things? How do you encourage others to do the same? Just leave a bunch of comments down below. I'd love to read them. And to close out the video, and since tomorrow is my birthday, I wanted to open up a couple of your letters. Dear David, my name is Adam. I am 11 years old and I really like your videos. They really help me and I think you and I have a lot in common because we both have the same birthday. Oh, happy birthday. <laughs> we both like Skittles and we both like Sprite and we're both Nintendo fans. I do love Skittles and Sprite. If you don't mind, I have a few questions. What website would you suggest to get good and cheap off? Arenas, somber.arena.com is really cool. Uh, for they start like at 10 bucks. When will you do your next concert and where is it going to be? I'm going to announce that very soon. Are you going to be doing a concert in Colorado? Quite possibly. How many ocarinas do you have? I just announced that recently. It was 163. I actually discovered more ocarinas, so it's probably closer to 170 now. How long have you been playing ocarinas? Since the year 2000. And if you ever do a concert in Colorado, I'd love to meet you. Thanks, Adam. And he drew some really cool pictures. So yes, I'm currently organizing a couple concerts right now. I'll give you guys some more information about that at a later time, and I'll let you know if it's gonna be in Colorado or anywhere near there anyway. So Adam, thank you and happy birthday. And this letter is from, doesn't say who, but it's from Owing Mills, Maryland. It's got this cool little block thing where you can shift it back and forth. Oh, you can see it better this way. It says pull gently. Boop. Nice. So this letter is from Bethany and she asks, can you please explain how to read tabs? I understand how to read sheet music, but I do not know how to read tabs. And not knowing how to read tabs has made it difficult to read music for songs I found on the internet. Another question I have is, will you be visiting the East Coast anytime soon, specifically Baltimore? And my last question would be, what is your favorite non-Zelda related video game? Sincerely, your newest fan, Bethany. She drew some really cute art and her linked her DA account, which is, uh, startopia.deviantart.com. Bethany, thank you for your letter. And there are a couple of videos I can recommend that kind of explain how to read tablature in the description below. But basically it's just, when you look at tabs, it's from your perspective down. And the black holes are the ones that you have covered and the white holes are the ones you have uncovered. But like I said, you can check out the videos in the description below for more information about that. I know I'm gonna be on the East Coast um, in March and April, but I'll give you more information later about that. And my favorite non-Zelda video game is an old Nintendo classic called Crystallis. The music was awesome, the gameplay, which is like RPG style, was really cool, and it has a lot of the same adventure type characteristics of the Legend of Zelda series, but I just played this one a lot more than the Legend of Zelda starting out, so it just has a very special place in my heart for me. Thank you, Bethany, and uh, I'll check out your DeviantArt too. And this last letter is from Jonathan in Ashland, Ohio. He sent me some, whoops, 
sent me some polymer clay things, a little Mario Star, a little ocarina, and a Pokeball. Very cute. So Jonathan wrote to me a couple times before, and he wrote, David, it's me again. I've noticed that I forgot to tell you my channel in past letters. It is Geek Greek Geek 618 Jonathan, thank you for the letter and the polymer clay figures. Really appreciate it, buddy. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Or not, I guess you don't have to do that. I'm posting new videos three times a week now. Every Monday is a tutorial, every Wednesday is a vlog, and every Friday is a music video. So I will see you guys on Friday.